come to worship on this Reformation Sunday. When we remember when Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to the door of Wittenberg Church. We are glad that you are tuning in with us. We will be hearing a little bit more about the Reformation later in our worship. Uh, we have lots of announcements in our bulletins and in our email blast that goes out. Uh, we hope that you are doing well and we continue now with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read together Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear though the earth be moved and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea, 
though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake, God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord, what desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shield with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. A reading from the third chapter of Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous, and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith, apart from works, prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. It must have been a gift, probably from my godparents. It was this little arch book. I don't know if you know of or remember arch books, but they were kind of like the little golden books for religious Bible stories. But it was this little arch book about the story that told the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, one of the first Bible stories that I remember learning, probably because of this arch book. It's a Bible story that were it not Reformation Sunday, we would be hearing as part of our gospel reading today. It was a story that I loved. A story that I remember hearing over and over again. A story that we had that Sunday school song that we sang that went along with it. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. Zacchaeus, the tax collector, who was so excited to hear that Jesus was coming into town that he rushed with the crowds, but he couldn't see, so he climbed a tree. And then Jesus, looking up, saw him and picked him out and told Zacchaeus to come down because Jesus was going to his house. I loved that idea. I loved those images as a little girl, especially when I was still smaller than other people, when I couldn't see often. And I loved this idea of being able to find Jesus by climbing a tree. Because for me, climbing trees in that time of my life was a daily event. I love the idea of a Bible character doing what we did as children. I loved the idea of Jesus choosing to spend time with someone. The idea that maybe Jesus would choose time, choose to spend time with me. I loved that idea of Jesus making someone feel special, important, loved. That little girl who read this story all those years ago is a whole lot older these days. But I still love this story of Zacchaeus for all those same reasons. I love this idea of this important, wealthy man being so excited to hear that Jesus was coming to town, that he rushed with all of the crowds just like them, to go and try and seek out Jesus. I love this idea, again, of this leader in the community scrambling up into tree branches, even if it was just a smaller tree and it wasn't like climbing a great big oak. But this idea of him climbing up there to get a look, to try to see. And I love this idea of Jesus recognizing him, calling him by name, and inviting him to come down because Jesus wanted to be with him that night. We all have that feeling, that longing to feel special, to feel important, to be loved by God. We all want to know that God recognizes us that God calls us by name, that God loves us. Over at Faith, we have a young girl who has been coming, as I say, since she was in a diaper. Her brother used to bring her down the streets to come to Vacation Bible School or the Wednesday Ministry. And now she's a lot older and able to get there by herself. But she still comes on a weekly basis and she runs in the door and she looks for us when she gets in and she will come into my office and she'll scream with delight when she finds me behind my desk and she runs over and she gives me a big hug and then she asks me what we're doing for the evening but the other thing that she's been doing 
for the last year or so is I have a whiteboard in my office and she will take one of the markers that are there on the little tray and she writes on the whiteboard, I love Andrea and Andrew very much. And she writes it over and over and over again. And of course I don't erase it, it's been up there for a long time. She's looking for that love, that importance. She's looking for that place where she is embraced and loved exactly for who she is. Now, I don't claim at all to be like Jesus, but there's something about that connection, that relationship, that she knows that there in that space with me and Pastor Amy and even the other adults who help out, that she is welcomed and loved. But I don't know if she realizes that as much as she might receive from us, from me, she gives in return. For every time she comes in the building and runs down the hall and walks in my office to see me and squeals with delight because I'm there, that fills my heart. That makes me feel just as special and important and loved as she is. Because I know that that love of God that we have shared with her over the years, she now shares in return. That's the thing about that love of Jesus Christ, that love of God. There is no limit. It, it doesn't run out. It multiplies the more we share it with one another. The more that we have given to others, they give back and they give on to those around them. That love of Jesus goes on and on. But in that story of Zacchaeus, as Jesus calls Zacchaeus to come down and tells him that he is going to go to his house that day, the people in the crowd grumble and complain. They don't think that Zacchaeus is worthy of that love. He's a tax collector. He's someone in their mind who participates with the Roman Empire, part of the system that makes them have to give of, of their earnings, of their life wealth. They think of him as a sinner and someone not worthy of Jesus' time and love and energy. But the thing is, that love that Jesus shares with Zacchaeus isn't limited only to him. It's available for them as well. And as Jesus shares it with Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus will go and has already shared it with those in his community. Unfortunately, this questioning and limiting of God's love is not exclusive to a Bible story. We know that there are times and places in our world that we put limits on God's love, or we try to. Or we try to use this message of God's love and forgiveness for our own purposes, or to manipulate and to hurt others. That's part of what we honor today and Reformation Sunday. We honor the work of the reformers, those who looked at the practices of the churches of the time back in the 14 and 1500s and said, this isn't right. The way that the people are being taught about the love of God, it doesn't fit with the word of God, with what we read in scripture. It doesn't fit with the Jesus that we meet there. Today we honor that work of Martin Luther who said, no, it is through the love of Jesus Christ that we are made right with God. It's not because we've paid enough money, because we've bought the right things from the religious leaders in the community. It's not because we've said enough of the right prayers or done enough penance. It's Jesus who loves and forgives us. It's this word of God this word of the scriptures that sets us free. 
Martin Luther and those reformers, all of them, helped to shape this understanding of God that we have today, this freedom in Christ, this freedom that enables us to love one another and be loved in return with this love of God. That's what we proclaim with our lives of faith. That's what we share with this young girl who comes and shares that love right back. That's what we share in our lives. This love and forgiveness of Jesus Christ that's given to us freely, freely through the life of Jesus, through his death on the cross and his rising again. This love of God that reaches out to each and every one of us and forgives us no matter what we've done. That was what Zacchaeus heard that day, that even with all that he might be doing in his life, he was loved by God. He was loved and forgiven. That's what we hear week after week in worship. That's what we share as we go out into this world. That's what we hear as we gather at this table for communion, that we are loved and forgiven by God in Jesus Christ. That's what this young girl at faith longs to hear. That's what Zacchaeus longed to hear. That's what we all long for, to know that we are special, that we are important, that we are loved by God to know that we are forgiven in Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. God, our fortress, we pray for the church. Write your law of love on the hearts of your people, that we remain steadfast in our witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our liberator, we pray for your earth. Bring new life to overused land and contaminated rivers. Reform and reorient our relationship with the environment, that we faithfully care for all of your creation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, our refuge and strength, we pray for the nations. Where they are in uproar, bring wise leadership and comfort for those in distress. Make wars to cease and peace to enter every land. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, our very present help in trouble, we pray for those in need. Show mercy to refugees and all fleeing from danger. Shelter any without homes. Calm all who are facing illness, surgery, or a new diagnosis, especially Carol, Vivian, Mary, Kareen, Virginia, Albert, and all those we name in our hearts. Bring new life to all who yearn to become parents, especially Jake and Kendra. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, our Redeemer, we pray for our congregations. Bless all who are preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Open their hearts to your Holy Spirit, teach them your word, and give them courage to proclaim their faith. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, our stronghold, we give thanks for those who have gone before us in faith, especially Martin Luther and all reformers. Renew and reform us as we strive to continue in your word. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of this peace with those among you. Let us pray. 
God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us, unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Trust that wherever we are gathered in the name of Christ, God is with us. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you, now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.